Hi, this is Grudgeworks, and I'm going to basically explain to you how to use Comfy UI in five minutes or less, hopefully. So let's get right to it. So whenever you open up Comfy, typically what you'll get is a basic workflow. Um, that's probably something like, let me show you. That's actually um, like this, right? So this is a basic SD 1.5 workflow, and um, you can go with that. Uh, but if you're using a different type of model, you're probably going to want to use a slightly different one, which we're going to build from scratch. So let me go ahead and delete that uh, really quick, uh, give you an idea about the Comfy UI GUI. Over here in the bottom right, you've got this little toggle link visibility, the little eye icon. That's if you want to hide or show the noodles. Um, this right here is pretty good. If you, if you get kind of all over the place with your uh, workflow you can just click fit view it's going to basically fit it all on the same screen and these are your zoom buttons over here is where you click on to find your workflows that you've created your custom ones if you want to see the ones that comfy itself uh, builds for you you just go into browse templates and as you can see they've got basics for image generation image image LoRa's flux control net upscaling basically everything you need so you don't even have to find workflows online you can uh, use the ones that they have built inside but if you want to build your own uh, I would recommend doing that and when you're done just go to workflow save as give it a name and then it'll save it into your workflow section so that's really good um, the comfy manager can be used to download additional nodes uh, model manager is where you download uh, models that are available uh, they actually have flux wand models in here they've got upscalers they have just about everything you don't even have to go online and go search you just go in here type in the name and you can find it here like for example you can see there's upscalers here so you just click on it and then choose install simple as that um, if you open up, open up a custom workflow and there's a lot of red boxes that means you're missing some nodes all you have to do is click on install missing nodes and that will uh, help you find the nodes that are missing it'll typically when you click on this it'll show you a list of all the nodes that are missing from your workflow it does that for you and then you've got your custom nodes manager if you know somebody who's created some custom nodes you want to find those you would go there I would recommend you getting RG3 he has the some of the best nodes available and there's a couple other guys that, you, that you'll probably hear about later that will help you out as well let me check my time we're at 2 minutes 21 seconds we're halfway there so let's go ahead and build our first workflow first thing you want to do is you want to go to load checkpoint um, you can also go to load diffusion model if you're using flux um, a lot of the newer flux models are actually um, will can be loaded through the load checkpoint if not they'll go through the load diffusion model uh, these are typically in the unit folder inside of your comfy folder and you choose the drop down there or you can just go to load checkpoint and these are all your different models that are labeled um, I have them labeled rather uh, let me go again go ahead and show you my folder this is my stable diffusion folder uh, this is on an external drive so you can point them to an external drive if you like if you don't have enough space and then you just name them I have models here Laura's here and then I have subfolders so I've got the name of each different type of model flux illustrious pony sdxl and so on and then inside of that i actually have subcategories or subfolders that explain exactly what these focus on so that's basically anatomy characters clothing and so on and so forth so that really helps out a lot because when you go to load your models your models you'll have those folders here you can just pick and choose so i'm gonna go ahead and just choose a generic one right here we'll go to reggie and then i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one won't be using it and let me check my time we're at uh, three minutes 31 seconds almost there so you're going to need to do a prompt. So the way you do your prompt is you click on clip text and code, which is like that. And then you, what you'll need to do is create a negative prompt as well. So you just alt and drag. And a lot of people, what they do is they go ahead and color these. So I'm going to make this green for positive and red for negative. And then you just go ahead and drag this to the, both of these like that. And if you want to add a Laura to your workflow, um, I'm going to do a control to select both of those, drag that over. I'm going to go ahead and double click and choose power load LoRa loader which is one I would recommend doing because you can load multiple LoRa's like so so we'll just do a detail LoRa here and then we'll add another one which is um, the Rage since we're using Rage right and then all you do is just add that in between this workflow here so this will go between your model and your positive prompt because you don't take that to you know you don't use a LoRa for your negative then you just add the model here and then you're going to add this to the case sampler which is the next thing we're going to create so just go ahead and click on case sampler they have many different case samplers you can use including advanced versions but if you just want to get going just do that there and then you just add this model over here to that and then do your positive conditioning and your negative conditioning and you'll need a latent image so you just type in empty latent but think of this as your canvas so when you're using things like sdxl or later you want to make sure it's 1024 by 1024 and then you just put that into your latent image 
then once everything gets into your case sampler, which is basically like the uh, the painter himself or the, the cook is mixing it up all up for you. And then you want to go ahead and just convert that to something that you can view, which is what the VAE decode is for. So we'll go ahead and do that, VAE decode, and then you'll need a way to view the image. And we'll just do a save image node here. Or you can just drag it like that, and there you go. And that'll automatically connect it for you. So then you just connect this to the samples, and then you'll just do um, your VAE from the model itself. Some models require a custom VAE, which you can load by double clicking and choosing load VAE. Most of the time they do not. Most of the time they're built in, so you can just connect there. Otherwise, you can connect that way. And it looks like we're over five minutes, but it's no big deal. We're getting there quick. And that's pretty much it. So we're just going to put a beautiful mountain range. Sorry, I have my caps lock on. And then for that, I'll just put ugly. And then we'll hit Q. And it should load this up pretty quick. And congratulations, we've got a beautiful mountain range that includes a person in there. I'm not sure why that's there, um, but that's probably because, let me do river and foreground. That should get rid of the person. And there you go. And that's pretty much it. That's how you create your own custom models, or excuse me, your own custom workflows. Hope that helped out a lot of people. Um, basically getting comfy basics in less than, well at this point, less than seven minutes. Take care.